So uh, some of you guys wanted me to talk a little bit more about hips. So what we're going to go over is what I consider to be one of our best like hip diagnostic movements. And that is to be in this kind of 90-90 position or like a shin box position, I'll call it either or. And then what we're doing is a lot of times you see people just doing it like this. And we get so concentrated on trying to get into these positions where we're moving back and forth and we're too stiff through the hips to actually do it well. So what we wanna do is actually use our arms to support ourselves and then that allows us to one, move better through our hips and two, it allows us to be more focused on what we're actually doing and be able to kind of feel what's happening up at our hips. So what we wanna do is when we're coming over this way, we wanna feel for what's, what's it feel like up here in the hip and we're pushing this knee trying to get it down. So for some of us, if we're really stiff, that might mean we just get to here before you see the actual hips having to turn. So if I go and you see me rotate, and now from here, I don't actually like move my hips that much. I can only get my knee to here before I have to actually let my hips move with it. So that tells me where that end range of motion is and how it feels in that hip joint. And when we do it like this and then we're supported, by going to here, that becomes my end range. And now I'm challenging that joint to go to that end range versus when I just flip back and forth here, there's way more movement through my hip or my pelvis. And I'm challenging the actual joint less of the femur rotating in that hips, that joint. And that's what we want is more challenge to the actual joint itself. And you guys should be able to see that for me, I can get this leg pretty good. And this one, a little bit, not quite as good. So I can tell that there's side to side differences there and you can feel what it's like in that joint and you wanna challenge it to go to that actual end range. And then from here too, we can drive this one down into the ground and we can think about lifting this ankle up. So we can do lots of things from this position to challenge the actual hips. And I think it's one of the best ways to kind of see where you're at, see how your hips are feeling. So let's say you go for a nine hour drive on the weekend after a long day working at a desk and you go to do this come Monday morning, which you'll probably find is like, ooh, I'm pretty stiff. And that tells you maybe if you're squatting today, of like you should take a little bit extra time warming those hips up versus if you get into it and you're feeling really good here, it's like, hey, my hips are, pretty happy with me right now and you can spend less time in there. But this to me is one of the best movements because what we're doing is we're actually ro rotating the joint up here instead of just, it's great to go and look at getting into like, um, so flexion and extension here. So here, this hip's really closed down and flexed and here it's really extended behind us. That's great that we want that side of our hips too, but a lot of us are just looking at that. How does that feel? Are my hip flexors tight versus this rotational side to it? So biggest piece here is not so much the angle that the legs are coming in at. If you can get to like a nice 90-90 and move through that, that means your hip mobility is probably a bit better. And if you have a lot of trouble with that, just bring this leg in and this one back, and that's going to be easier for you to rotate through it than if they're out like this. That's gonna challenge you a little bit more. And then use your hands to support yourself. And then you're really just trying to go through that and eventually you let your hips drop, but you're trying to drive to that end range of motion there. And then I can come into it. And then same thing here, try and keep the hips from dropping with it and see, okay, that's as far as I can get my knee. I'm challenging that hip joint. And then you can drop to it. You can get some rotation in there. There's so many things that we can do from this position. We can drive this knee down. We can bring this ankle up. We can rotate. We can rotate and then take a nice big breath here. And that's really good for kind of stretching out our intercostals and stuff like that and getting um, through our mid back, getting some rotational movement. But my favorite thing for the hips is just sitting here like this and seeing where that is versus that kind of sloppy where you're throwing your body around a lot. You might look like you're doing more with it but you're not challenging the joint as much going like this. It's maybe, you know, you can warm that joint up a little bit, but when you try and keep these hips from rotating this way and keeping them up, you really get to find that feeling of that end point up here by driving this knee down. 
And I feel like that's one of the best things we can do for our hips and to see and just kind of gauge where they're at. So start doing that fairly regularly and see what the difference is for you. Um, week to week, when you have a week where you feel like you're moving lots, you're gonna feel that it feels better in there and you have a really stiff week, you're gonna notice the difference there as well. And then you can use that as a regular gauge of like, okay, how much do I need to warm up today compared to other days? Thank you.